Yeah, so I'm Simon from, uh, there's actually a few companies here. So one is a company called LX. LX, we are Internet of Things specialists. Uh, we build Internet of Things products and that's essentially um, what it looks like in agriculture, sensors on farms. Uh, and Insight is our ag tech brand for smart farms. Uh, and Maverick is an application for a spray drift. So um, that's where there are three different names kind of coming in here. But thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, I actually want to um, start, uh, I'm going to burn a minute or two with a little personal story. It's actually not that related. Um, my, <laughs> my, um, uh, my dad, unfortunately, about four weeks ago, was diagnosed with stage four lung cancer. That's really bad. Um, and he went into chemo uh, in Sydney uh, about, I think, three weeks ago for the first time. And the nurse is talking him through what to expect and everything. And um, uh, she said after he goes to the toilet, uh, you know, has a wee, um, he should double flush the toilet because it's toxic to other people, the chemo, very toxic. And, um, and you could see his brain starting to tick over and, um, and he kind of says, you know, how toxic? And she said, it's pretty toxic to other humans. And he just kind of looks at her and he says, do you reckon it'd kill flea bane? <laughs> <laughs> and I just wanted to share that story because I'm up the back there listening to everyone, thinking the things we do to control weeds. Anyway. Um, yeah, so I'll get into it, but I just thought you might appreciate that. Out of all the audiences who might appreciate that was it. I, 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 I don't think she quite understood what he was talking about. <laughs> anyway, so um, I'll kick off just by asking, does everyone remember uh, before cruise control, um, some cars had like a little um, uh, thing that you could set like a speed, like 110 k's an hour, and if it went over to give you an alert? Really what that was, was like the very early days in terms of trying to raise situational awareness to, to your driving habits, right? You know, you just kind of set alarm going, you might be on the phone or doing whatever it is, but you get a little nudge and you go, okay, I'm going to slow down. We went from there to cruise control. Um, but one of the problems with cruise controls would sometimes we'd run up towards the back of someone or, uh, you know, shoot over the hill kind of thing. So we added radar and that radar allowed us to kind of adaptively control that right if you go up behind someone. Um, in parallel with that, we had Navman, um, you know, the little Tom, you know, you know um, was it Tom Tom and those kind of things? And they had moving map displays, but they didn't have real time information about traffic conditions. They didn't know that an accident was like, they weren't connected. They were just a, a map with a GPS marker on the screen. We then progressed and pressed to self-parking and, you know, and, and, and kind of lane following and this kind of stuff to now where we've got full-blown um, you know, Tesla auto drive kind of systems which have an enormous amount of artificial intelligence. They're really, really cool. And legally, we haven't caught up. Le legally, we don't let this happen, but out of the box, they've got more driving experience than any human will ever have. Um, now, when I talk about Maverick, um, which is this art of, like this a software platform that we're developing um, and trialling for spray advisory, I want you to think about those different phases because the first phase is about simple nudges, right? Simple nudges. That's the cruise control thing, like the the little nudge that hey, you should raise your situational awareness to stop and have a look at what's going on, and then go back to what you're doing. Little nudges. Um, these are thresholds and alerts. The next is where we went to what we call a, um, um, essentially an expert system. An expert system is something where we take a whole heap of things that are complex and we throw them into a computer system and we get the computer system to do the heavy lifting. Like if you think about um, finding an optimum path from here to somewhere else, um, you might have three different routes. You might have, I mean, not here, but you know, if you're in Sydney or something, you might have tolls one way and this the other way and traffic congestion the other way. You could do that yourself, but it'd take a lot of time and we just want to jump in and go, you know, two seconds, okay, this is a quick, you know, the fastest path, let's go. That's called an expert system. That's where we take a lot of the heavy lifting um, away from the human. And that's good because as humans we make errors, um, as humans we rush and you know, all these kind of things. And then of course you go to full blown artificial intelligence and automation where we actually relax into a system that often these days AI systems are becoming superhuman in their performance in that one particular task. Not generally, but actually better than a human in certain tasks. Uh, there's a lot of evidence, you know, uh, you know, that will speak to that. Um, so, um, when we looked into the spray drift problem, what we realised is that, um, and I've actually got my pilot's licence, so I've kind of spent time in spray rigs and in the, in the cockpit, and and also just smart farm stuff. So it was kind of, it really hit me that. 
Well, I'm only a VFI pilot. I can only, uh, I'm a fair weather pilot. I can fly in the daytime and I can train tracks and things to get around. But, um, you know, if you're an IFR pilot, you need a different level of training. You need a different cockpit and instrumentation in your, in your airplane. And you need a different flight plan. You need on-ground controls and a whole heap of different things that wrap around what is essentially a really difficult challenging, dangerous uh, exercise, but every day we take off planes, planes and we land them in, in cloud and at night time and all that kind of stuff. Now one of the issues with spraying is that, um, you know, we went from foam markers and things, you know, you remember foam markers, right? I mean, I couldn't see them in the daytime, let alone the night time, you know, we couldn't do it at night time. Um, but technology has allowed us to to spray at night and all these different things, right? It's made it a lot easier. Um, but what, what's really happened is that our spraying practices um, have essentially gone beyond the technology that's supporting what we're doing. Like the, the frameworks that sit around us are nowhere close to being sufficient to allow us to do it well. Um, and also, it's just really complicated. There's a lot of things to, to get right to do to actually spray well. So when you look in, you know, in, a, you know, in a modern sprayer, We've got a lot of equipment around us that is um, related to our location or, you know, the oil pressure or whatever it might be, but we don't have much or any information that is relating to atmospheric conditions or the fluid dynamics that's going on. Like the actual things that matter. See, in an aeroplane, those things matter a lot because they are the difference between crashing or, or, or not, right? But we don't have the right tools in front of us, the right planning tools or the right uh, you know, real-time tools in front of us to actually make good decisions when we're spraying. The other thing is that we've got an optical illusion that's going on. And the optical illusion is really simple. What we see when we look out is water, right? We can't see the chemical, right? It's, it's too, you know, it's, it's, it's so, uh, such a small part of what's going on. So when you've got volatilization kicking in at a few centimetres outside the nozzle and it's going up in the air as a gaseous form, you're not seeing that. So you kind of get this kind of false positive feedback that, you know, you're doing a good job, right? So when you look at you know, the kind of instrumentation that we need in a sprayer to do a good job, um, that's where we, we're going with Maverick. But I want to kind of ground this conversation um, around a, a real story. And that is um, we do a lot of interviews when we build new products. We've got a you know, huge investment behind this thing and you, don't, you want to get it right. And we, we interview people all across the whole spectrum, not just the guys with the advanced spray training course and the, and the great sprays, also the guys with the old sprays and the guys who don't care. We want to know everyone, so we want to build tools that work for everyone. Um, now, this one guy, um, I interviewed him and I said, how do you maintain situational awareness when you're spraying at night time? And he was a young guy, lovely bloke, and he said, listen, honestly, by the way, no one around here, right? No one around here. Um, Victoria, so you can blame the, blame the Victorians. Um, um, I can see, can see like the pitchforks coming out at the end of it. Uh, and he said, listen, to be honest, I've got you know, young kids, I'm busy, uh, I, I, I work all through the day and then I spray at night. I said, it's really hard to stay awake at night. So what I do uh, before I spray at night time is I download a bunch of Netflix movies. And I press play on the sprayer and I press play on the movies. And I have no situational awareness of what's going on. Right? Now that guy needs a nudge. When their uh, potential inversions developing or the wind's gone out or you know, you're in the aircon cab and Delta T, whatever it might be, right? That guy needs a nudge. So let's start right at that very end where you just need thresholds and nudges for some people. Also a little bit of micro content. Sometimes when you do advanced spraying, well firstly some of the people who need the nudges don't do advanced spray training courses, right? So an app that actually delivers some training in, in flight that says, hey, if your booms are up around your neck, you know, this is why it's important to bring them down. Give them a little bit of content from a spray training course at that point in time when something's not right. Now, when we looked at the things that would essentially feed into being the Tesla autopilot for spraying, um, we were overwhelmed by the number of different variables, everything from, you know, pH to spray mix viscosity, uh, obviously operating pressure and nozzle and, you know, boom height and um, uh, crop stress and looking at soil moisture probes to, you know, to, to get a feel for that. Um, uh, look at, looking at boom flex and and um, uh, you know, obviously speed and a whole heap of different things, uh, the target itself, um, localised inversion towers. So we, we, do, um, you know, we do have and sell localised inversion towers that don't do the vertical wing component, but there's still a nudge. There's still a nudge in terms of when you've got one, uh, you know, at least a temperature inversion on your property. Um, uh, but you know, your delta T, UV and solar radiation to look at you know, the, the risk of um, you know, evaporation after it, it goes on. Um, I won't go into all these factors, the bottom line is that there's lots of them. There's lots of things to actually take into consideration when you're trying to spray well. Now, what we are building with Maverick is something that takes in environmental factors. So those, uh, those environmental factors are going on on your property. 
Um, the machinery and the equipment configuration, so what your nozzles are and what your, you know, all those kind of things. Um, the spray inputs the operator because some people have multiple operators and they want to know that each operator is doing a good job so you know the owner actually gets a report of spray efficacy. We, we look not just at drift but we focus on efficacy because everyone, even someone who's, who may not care that they drift on someone else's property, I mean not that there's many of those but there are some, I know, I've, I've interviewed some. Um, uh, again Victoria. Um, <laughs> It was a joke, sorry, if any Victorians ever watch this video, I'm sorry, it is a joke. Um, so, although it's true, but, um, <laughs> um, but um, yeah, but, but we actually talk in terms of efficacy because no one wants to, even if you don't care about someone else, you don't want to waste your chemical, right? So, and, and efficacy brings in plant stress and other factors that aren't related to drift. Um, but the operator themselves, the paddock, the paddock boundaries, the spray plant foundations, um, and we look at automatically populating starter crop so that that gets better, um, bringing down starter crop, weather forecast forward looking, um, you know, the, the latest, um, but sometimes there are local laws that are different between different states um, of what you can do or different countries. So we're looking at a whole heap of different things, wrapping in educational content, um, and, and, then, and then producing a dynamic spray plan, real-time operator feedback. Um, a reports for the owner and also if you opt in community reporting as well so a dynamic spray plan could be you know something that essentially says listen you know conditions are trending a certain way you might want to you know finish this tank and wrap up or pause immediately or change your plan B spray configuration whatever it might be um, so a little bit like you're a nav man you know kind of automatically rerouting um, giving the real-time uh, feedback the, the operator real-time feedback and then with community so things like you know, alerting neighbours even, making that easier, just so you press the button and just your spray plan gets, you know, submitted. Um, we also had a story of someone recently who was folding out and someone thought they were spraying uh, 2,4-D or something, but it was a different chemical that was fine and, and, and there was a bit of a conflict there. So actually, so if you wanted to opt in, you could actually um, say, you know, this is what I'm doing, so someone could interrogate it instead of accusing someone of, you know, not doing the right thing. Now, we, when, the work that we do with smart farms, we, um, uh, we've got this kind of view that once you've instrumented your farm, we'll, we, we essentially build apps that you download onto your farm. Right? In the same way you download apps onto your phone, you would download apps onto your farm to solve lots of different problems. That's a different presentation and a different, different kind of story. But Maverick, um, and we did name it after Tom Cruise and Top Gun. I'm, I'm a bit of a fan of you know, to, the, the Top Gun <laughs> movie series. But, but it's because Maverick's really good at what he does. Yeah, now, he, okay, he's a, bit of a, he's a bit of a cowboy, but he is good, right? And he can push the limits. And one of the reasons we wanted to give it that persona is because we are also about opening up spray windows as well as closing them down. Because the problem with being too conservative, it's a little bit like you know, someone doing 80Ks on a, on a freeway, is that sometimes if you, if you don't give enough people enough options, they start just going, bugger it, I'm going to go anyway. So we wanted to look at opening spray windows, focusing on efficacy. and. Um, the first version of Maverick is actually incredibly simple. It's just that little nudge that we spoke about at the start. It's little, you know, the little speedo alert thing, where you're just looking at instead of sometimes like you know looking at wind speed and direction, um, at like wind speed and um, delta t, everything at one point in time, um, you get it continuously as you're spraying, right? So you're getting this continual data feed um, with, with inversion, uh, local inversion risk data. Um, and listen, this is not the right language. We changed this. Um, this was an early prototype, but obviously we don't want to say good or we don't, we, we never want to say to go. Uh, it's a little bit like Tesla autopilot. We don't let it do that yet. We're just saying we want to give you a set of tools that you can make good decisions around. Um, but essentially, you, you're taking, you can't see it on the screen because it's uh, the resolution, but you actually kind of got these different things that it's saying. The, the conditions, depending on how the operator sets it up, right, are favourable, unfavourable, or, you know, whatever it is. So we're giving a green, an orange, a red kind of risk profile. And the idea is that someone who, for example, is watching Netflix, um, if they go into the orange, they get a nudge. Right? And when you get a nudge, they pause Netflix and they pause the spray and they go out and have a look. And they increase their situational awareness and then use you know, what they've been taught to make a good decision. The second generation of Maverick that we're... Uh, so that's, that's with quite a few farmers right now, that first one. Um, in, in Victoria. Um, <laughs> um, and um, the second one is being trialled at the moment um, down the, in the Riverina. Um, this is where we've got um, data from the rig. We're getting real-time uh, relative wind speed, um, and you know it's red because something's you know uh, obviously showing it's 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 a good time to perhaps stop. Um, but we're doing some forward-looking stuff as well. So we're we're looking at say for example the spray windows moving forward because obviously plant forward planning is this is important. You don't want to get stuck with a tank. Um, so say it's red right now, and you can look at why is it red? It's all well, the delta T is out. But that's a forecast. It's not 
and that's that's real data at this point in time it's a forecast or for example here it's it's forecasting that there's going to be rain and so it's, it's saying you know it's going to be red so you've got this kind of um app at the moment uh with these um you know you can record the spray event uh, the summary of it and, and some notes and a few things. That's the second generation. Now the third generation is actually like there are four or five people. We've got a team of 65 people, uh, 40 of which are engineers. We work on this stuff all the time. And, and um, there's about four of them in the river end right now just installing this device that's going into this awesome looking spray rig, which is really cool. It's like, like a, yeah, it's, it's beautiful. I've never seen one like that before. Um, but uh, it's pit farming down south. But um, what, what we've got there is a, um, we've got the boom height, with the, boom, uh, like the operating pressure of the nozzles and a few things, and we're wrapping it in to give this kind of more comprehensive uh, cockpit, if you like. With now, listen, it's 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 kind of we're we're doing an, a, a spray drift risk, in, like we have this thing, a spray drift like drift risk in index that we calculate from all the different factors. Um, but we're actually trying to give a visualization of what could be going on, and that's because we, our brains respond really well to visual cues. Like we, we respond really well to a visual stimulus, um, even if that might be a little bit inaccurate. It's it, so the psychology. It's important to try and change behaviours. Now I've got a little video here. Um, that's this is showing the this third generation that we're working on right now, where um, what we're doing is we're, we're just like you've got all the, you know the, the devices on your farm, and you go over create a new spray plan. I recorded it because I didn't want any internet problem. So you choose your spray rig, it's already kind of configured. You don't have to put in this information, like your nozzle spacing every time, it's just already preloaded. And this builds your spray plan for you. So fallow spraying, um, you know, summer fallow broadleaf and summer grass, right? So we go, okay, um, from here, go next. Now, you've already got your paddocks configured in, on your property. So, you know, you do it once and then you just pick the paddock you're gonna operate in and it selects that for you. Uh, you then, um, at that point, go next again, so you've got your field selected. Uh, now, in here we're going to add two products that are, wouldn't normally go together, and that's just to show a warning. It's not because we're, you know, kind of ignorant. It's, we're going to put in dicamba, um, and then we're going to add glyphosate, right? And the reason we're doing that is just to show a warning that could be prompted. Um, so, you know, this is going to, you can't read it, but this is going to... What's wrong with that? Oh, sorry, I don't know. Sorry. Well, maybe it's fine. I, I don't know. But anyway, sorry, 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 maybe it's fine. So, so, um, so the point was, sorry, the point with that was it increases your drift risk index, right? Um, so then you go, um, uh, so choose your nozzles. Sorry, what I meant was it was, uh, you know, it increases your drift risk profile, yeah. So you, you then select your nozzle, um, and at that point, You can see your spray plan has been automatically uh, built. Go to risk forecast, and you can see what that looks like for the next, you know, th you know, this week. Now, obviously, it's pretty restrictive. So, okay, we click on six, uh, say tomorrow morning, and see why is it orange, and you go, okay, it's the wind. Um, click on that wind, um, and you go, okay. If we want to light this up, let's change to an ultra coarse nozzle, and you can see it obviously light up. You, you've now got your spray windows. Um, so now with that, we go to the spray plan, go back to it, and your water rate's gone up as well. But um, you go to the risk forecast, you can see that for, you can have a, a number of different sprays kind of set up at once. You can see that you can go now. And then if you go to spray day, you get your end cabin um, Oh, sorry, before spray day, it'll go through, um, uh, you know, you select the spray, but you, you then go through um, just a little summary, and it'll then take you to your pre-flight checks, so, you know, your, um, uh, you know, the, the different things that you need to do, uh, everything from, like, you know, PPA to take hygiene or whatever it might be, so it's kind of just a little pre-flight checklist that you click off. Now we're taking a photo of the targets uh, at a particular GPS coordinate. So, so you actually go out and actually take a photo, and that's because we can use essentially like I mean one just for for the operator, but two to actually throw into an AI algorithm that will look at the efficacy of that spray. Um, then yes, you go to in cab view, and then that's your you know your copy if you like. Um, and from there you can click on different things to get a little bit more information about certain, certain things. Um, so you might want to click on, say, humidity and you kind of get a full spectrum of all, your, uh, all those factors. 
Um, you might want to click on, say, you know, some of the weather data or whatever it might be um, to get a, a more detailed view. And then, um, and also, you know, you can look at, you know, uh, you know the, the, I guess a little bit more information under that, uh, under those different elements in, in the software. Now, um, that, you can pause your spray event, you can, you can obviously, you know, stop it and record those things. Now, some people, honestly, they just want to be able to dispose of the spray record. Um, but obviously, yeah, no, they, they like, uh, I'm just being really honest. We do, we build products based on surveys, right? Um, so some people want to, want to actually get rid of the spray record um, at the end of that and they want to write whatever they want in there. Um, obviously, um, we're automatically recording all the data, so and it's your data, um, but you know you can keep it to then you know show that you've done the right thing as well. Um, now, sorry, with, with, that, with that comment about um, glass fat and dog chemistry, I actually don't know a lot about the chemistry, so I'm not a spray guy. We work with experts, subject matter experts. It was an agronomist down south who said, oh, we wouldn't normally do this, and so, um, but it's because of the, not because it's not a good combination, because it increases the drift risk index quite a lot. Um, now, um, just a few things. I hope that kind of helps, you know, uh, you know, give you an understanding of the work we're doing. Um, this is a really big investment, so um, we're, we're probably about 35, uh, 40 million dollars or so in, in total across this kind of smart farming and, you know, and, and Maverick's one of those components of it. Um, just a few actionable things though from today. Um, if you are interested, we are looking for people who are interested in uh, trialling Maverick. Um, so there, you know, there are different generations being trialled, so I mean, there's a QR code if you want to do that.